I am Tom Christensen from the Office of Secretary of Defense Historian. Uh, today we are very, very pleased to have Paul Gillia with us. Uh, Paul is a George Lynn Cross Research Professor in the Department of History at the University of Oklahoma. He holds an MA and PhD from Brown University and has held fellowships at John Hopkins University and Washington University in St. Louis. Gillia is the author of several books, including Liberty on the Waterfront, Society and Culture of American Maritime World in the Age of Revolution, which received the 2004 Society for Historians of the Early American Republic Best Book Prize, and the 2004 North American Society for Oceanic History John Lyman Book Award in the category of United States Maritime History. Professor Gillia has organized an adult civics program in the state of Oklahoma, consulted with museums, edited several books, and lectured widely, widely in both Europe and America. Throughout his career, he has sustained an interest in how common people have been affected by larger events in history. Dr. Gillia's most recent publication, Free Trade and Sailors' Rights in the War of 1812, reminds us that our second war with Great Britain was not a mistake. Rather, it was a contest for the ideals of the American Revolution and reflecting on the meaning that war is essential in helping us to better comprehend the origins of the American nation. Dr. Paul Gillian. Thank you, Tom, very much. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And thank you for inviting me here to speak and thank all of you uh, for showing up uh, this afternoon, this steamy afternoon if you've been outside. Uh, well, I'm going to be talking about my book, Free Trade and Sailors' Rights in the War of 1812. Um, let me start by just mentioning something about this phrase, free trade and sailors' rights. This phrase was the most important political phrase during the War of 1812. We remember things like, don't give up the ship, we have met the enemy, uh, and they are ours. But for people who lived through this time period, free trade and sailors' rights was absolutely essential. How essential? Um, they used it in politics. Uh, this is a uh, political advertisement in a newspaper uh, for who to vote for uh, by the Jeffersonian Republicans. Uh, they used it in popular culture. Uh, this is a, va uh, a picture uh, that is uh, in the Smithsonian Museum. And if you can, I know it's not the greatest picture, uh, not the greatest picture of a picture, uh, but uh, you can see it says free trade uh, and sailors' rights. Um, the Navy, uh, the Navy made it their own. This was very, very important to the Navy. There's a Navy men raising it on uh, the masthead of some ships. Um, it was used in political cartoons. Uh, this is a Republican political cartoon, uh, basically it's saying uh, with Liberty uh, telling Napoleon uh, that after we deal with uh, John Bull, we're gonna turn to you and assure a slight change, seamen's rights uh, and uh, free trade. Uh, one more, or two more actually. Uh, this was a, a newspaper or actually a magazine uh, Niles Weekly Register, which is the most important news magazine of the era, uh, and they, uh, Niles, Hezekiah Niles, who was a Baltimore publisher, dedicated an entire special uh, edition to the victories uh, that were won early in the war by the Navy, and notice uh, it says American seamen on top, and sort of almost, actually it's like not a headline, but a midline, uh, the big, perhaps the biggest thing that jumps out of the page, at least to me when I look at this page, uh, is free trade and sailors' rights. And even the Federalists uh, used it uh, to sort of um, sarcastically mimicking, uh, and this is an anti-Jeffersonian attack uh, on uh, James Madison and claiming that he was taxing and taxing everybody because he was so concerned uh, with free trade and sailors' rights. We have forgotten this phrase. We have forgotten this phrase, or most of us have forgotten this phrase. It doesn't really appear in the history books very much, and yet this was absolutely essential, absolutely essential to the people of this era. And so when I began this book, 
I began with the basic question of, why was this phrase so crucial to these people? Um, uh, and as, my, as the introductory comments uh, that Tom had for me uh, indicated, uh, it, it is crucial because I think it gives, I believe it gives meaning uh, to the American Revolution. Uh, excuse me, it gives meaning to the War of 1812, tying the War of 1812 to the meaning of the American Revolution, and in two very crucial ways. And the two elements of the phrase, free trade and sellers' rights. Free trade really refers to a complex of ideas that came out of the American Revolution, a complex of ideas uh, that essentially was telling the rest of the world, we're going to do diplomacy differently. We're going to move away from those mercantilistic policies, those restrictions on trade. We're going to open trade up. We're going to trade with all the world. And this is a revolutionary idea uh, that was pushed in the um, 18th century by some of the major thinkers of the uh, 18th century, uh, most famously by Adam Smith um, in The Wealth of Nations, published in 1776, uh, but is an idea which kind of the Americans seized upon and lay behind their whole notion of, um, of diplomacy. Uh, and they say, well, we have a revolution and we're going to change the way, the way people think. Wars are created by monarchs who try to, you know, this is the idea behind it, that are uh, monarchs who are only concerned with personal aggrandizement. And if we have this notion of free trade, we'll have a peace with all the world. And I'm, you'll turn again uh, briefly to uh, Hezekiah Niles's. And if you look on the bottom of that page, there are sort of three things uh, that sort of jumped out of that page at you. One, American seamen. Two, free trade and sales rights. And three, peace to a troubled world. And that free trade was going to bring a peace to a troubled world. This is the, the idea. So that's one component. We'll go back to the phrase again. Uh, the second component of the phrase, sailors' rights. I wrote a book called Liberty on the Waterfront. And part of the idea behind the Liberty on the Waterfront was that American sailors were considered, uh, or I should say sailors in the 18th century were considered people who lived on periphery, uh, people who didn't have roots anywhere, people who didn't have rights. But of course, we all know, we all know this, that in the American Revolution, one of the fundamental ideas expressed in the Declaration of Independence was that all men are created equal. Thomas Jefferson articulates that. That idea is seized upon. That idea is grabbed by all Americans. And ultimately, this idea is extended to one group after another. And one very crucial group that's extended to are sailors. And that in the 1790s, in the early 1800s, the, the idea that sailors have rights, uh, the same rights that the legislators in Congress had, and the, and the newspapers said that uh, when they were defending, uh, when they were attacking, I should say, the notion that the British were impressing American seamen, forcefully taking American seamen uh, into, their, um, into their Navy. Uh, this idea that the United States government needed to protect the rights of everybody, including common sailors. So this phrase, free trade and sailors' rights, this, this phrase really gets to the very essence, the very central meaning of the American Revolution, which also, for my purposes, interpretively, that the meaning of the War of 1812 is why we fought the War of 1812, why Americans were willing to risk their lives against the greatest power on earth, greatest maritime power on earth, was because they were defending, the Americans were defending their revolution. Okay. Um, so this is what my book's about. Okay. And uh, the book is about uh, divided into five parts. Uh, five, uh, the first part, it deals uh, with free trade. Now, some, some of the things I just talked about, I, I expand in, <laughs> in much, much more detail talking about different meanings what free trade meant, uh, and take it up to the beginning, right about 1800. Uh, the second part explores sailors' rights and the idea that, these, uh, that uh, 
opposition to impressment, reaching back into the colonial period, through the American Revolutionary War, into the 1790s, up to 1800. Those, so I try to take these two ideas, free trade and sailors' rights, and to talk about them separately. Uh, the third part of the book is on origins. And here I explore the origins of the War of 1812. And when I explore the origins of the War of 1812, I include things like uh, the, the, the desire to drive Native Americans out of the Trans-Appalachian West. I talk about things like uh, the desire to conquer Canada, even the desire to conquer Florida, even though Florida was Spanish. There was a big desire to do that in the War of 1812. But ultimately, ultimately, I argue that what really counted when people would try to explain what they were doing, what they were doing was defending American honor as it revolved around free trade and sales rights. So that's a quick overview of my book. I could spend a lot of time talking about the whole book. We could be here for hours and hours and hours as I do that. Trust me, I could do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm only going to take one little piece of the story, uh, a piece from uh, Oh, I should say, I didn't do the whole over, overview. I, I have a, the fourth part's about the war, and then the fifth part's about the memory, uh, and the memory especially of the phrase fr of free trade and sellers' rights, which lasts up to about the eve of the Civil War. Uh, that phrase becomes, remains important. What I'm really going to do today is just talk about a little bit segment of uh, part four, mainly because it, it's about a, there's a great story here. And uh, you, it's a great story which has a larger meaning. And those are always the best kinds of stories uh, to hear. Uh, and um, so we're just going to take a little piece of this story. So we'll start uh, with our story. And the story is really about where the slogan comes from. And the slogan comes from one man, a captain in the Navy, uh, and one ship, a frigate, which has a tremendous uh, experience and that's central to the whole sense of honor and defending the uh, free trade and sellers' rights. And that, that's what we're going to uh, be talking about today. So let's talk a little bit about this captain. Captain David Porter was from Baltimore, came from a mercantile family. He, if there ever was a person who was born and who lived the issues of free trade and sellers' rights, it was Captain David Bor Porter. Um, in uh, the 1790s, he was a young man, and his father owned some uh, ships that uh, sailed from Baltimore that traded with the West Indies. And in 1796, he was um, at Saint Dominique. Saint Dominique uh, is Haiti, uh, but it was then the name for Haiti. Uh, and the British, there, was, there were several American uh, trading vessels uh, in a harbor in uh, Saint Dominique trading actually with the British who were attempting to conquer Saint Dominique at the time. Uh, and a British captain attempted to impress the, the seamen, and the Americans organized and fought off the British press gangs from the ships. David Porter, as a young man, helped fight off those British press gangs. His son, who writes a biography of him later on, says that there were two other times he faced press gangs. We'd, I'm not so sure if the evidence is, is there for that. Uh, so he knew all about sailors' rights from firsthand experience. Uh, the next time his father sailed to the West Indies, we're not sure if his son was with him. I suspect he was, but the records are not always as clear as we would like. The next time, French privateers searched um, his sh uh, the ship and stole a whole parcel of go goods. And of course, if the French privateers are doing that, they're doing that in violation of the idea of free trade. Well, because French privateers were seizing American vessels, stealing American goods in 1797, uh, the United States then engages in a war, or a quasi, the quasi-war with France. It's at this point that David Porter becomes a midshipman um, in the American Navy. He serves on the Constellation, and is on the Constellation when it fights Le Sergent, uh, a French, uh, large French frigate. He, early in his life, fought to defend free trade uh, and sailors' rights. So you see how he's, this, is, he's, this is all part of his life. And he continues uh, in his career, uh, stays in the Navy. Uh, unfortunately for him, he was aboard the Philadelphia when it grounded off of Tripoli and served 
uh, for 18 years as a prisoner of the Tripolitans, he knew 